Late summer 2012, right on schedule, the blue waters of the Columbia River estuary turn crimson, the result of a yearly massive redwater bloom. On the reverse, scientists from the Applied Physics Laboratory at the University of Washington. They're here to study the bloom. When you drive over the Astoria Bridge and you look down in the water, you see the water is red. And as a scientist, I'm interested in why the water can turn red, why a bloom can persist and grow when there's very strong currents. For two days, the APL team put the Columbia's crimson tide under the microscope. We had a ship in the middle of the channel at anchor. We had a plane in the air to give us the large spatial picture and we had the underwater vehicles flying up and down to give us detailed information on the currents, the plankton distributions. The vehicles navigate in the river um, using long baseline navigation. Prior to deployment, we deploy four trans acoustic transponders in the river and the vehicle communicates with us using uh, acoustic modem packets. And it transmits information on its latitude, longitude, speed, depth, mission leg, and other information. Onboard sensors also measure pigments in the river, turbidity, and dissolved oxygen in the water. The phytoplankton is highly productive, produces lots of oxygen, and removes carbon dioxide from the water. The oxygen production is really good for the water quality. The red bloom, being highly productive in producing oxygen, in part mitigates the low oxygen coming in from the, from the ocean. And that's good because, for example, salmon need oxygen in the water to breathe. Probing the mysteries of the Columbia's crimson tides, APL partners with the Oregon-based Center for Coastal Margin Observation and Prediction. Earlier research established the non-toxic red blooms are the visible results of high concentrations of a microorganism called Mesodinium rubrum, our goal for this project is to map and try and understand the spatial and temporal distributions of the, the red bloom. We're going to put all of that information together in numerical models and try and simulate the system. That's the way forward to be able to understand the impact of these blooms on the ecology of the Columbia River. Science at work for you. This is APL, the Applied Physics Laboratory at the University of Washington in Seattle.